Hello and welcome to the instruction on setting up the G42 server. After I've done a demo video for the G42 server that I've written, uh, people in the comments started to ask me how to get it set up, which is um, pretty simple on the G42 server part, but there are a couple of moments that might be tricky because uh, G42 server doesn't run by itself, it needs the G42 program, which it only provides a web interface for. So, setting up G42 might be a bit of a problem on a Raspberry Pi, uh, but in the video description I've already included links on the instructions on how to get things running, but let's just uh, do it all step by step. So. In general, what do you need to run the G42 server? First of all, you need Java on your machine. Then, uh, on a Raspberry Pi, by the way, that should not be a problem. As far as I understand, all the, the Debian Visi, uh, also known as Raspbian, uh, already comes with Java. So, I have myself a Raspberry Pi, uh, a Raspberry Pi 2 here, actually, on the camera. And that's uh, uh, we seen this nice picture on Raspberry Pi already. Okay, let me just have a new tab here, and I went checking for Java. I see that uh, the Java version eight is already there by default. I haven't been installing it. I just had it from the uh, Raspbian, the Wheezy, um, out of the box. So that wasn't a problem. Uh, then. The next thing you need is the G42 program itself. And uh, once again, this might be tricky to get it on Raspberry Pi. On the Linux, I think you can just install it using the apt-get or whatever repository you have there. And um, you can also have that on Mac OS. On Mac OS, uh, I think you can install it through Mac ports or brew, stuff like that. But there is also one trick on the Mac OS that I'm going to show you now is uh, that once you get your camera, I have a, a Mac OS down here. So once you get your camera in, let me turn it on. And I have your photo already installed. And the thing is that uh, Mac OS runs a special service Uh, that actually takes care of your camera, let's say so, and uh, it uh, keeps the camera busy because of that. So the G-Photo cannot access it. So in order to stop the service, we have to execute the command kill all in the terminal or use an activity monitor. So now that I've stopped it, the G-Photo works. Come on. Yeah. And I can do stuff like uh, have the capture preview. Yep. All right, so that's it. And uh, soon as that, every time you unplug and plug back your camera into your Mac, the PTP camera service gets running again. So you have to kill it every time. Let's do it from Activity Monitor now. The CPU sort alphabetically. P, scroll down to P. Lmn O. Where's that PTP camera? And let's do the quit. Or rather, false quit. Yep, it stopped now. So again, capture preview. Okay, works. The first command is a bit slow, but it, it works. So that's uh, the problem on the uh, mark with <coughs> getting the G4 to working. On the Raspberry Pi or any Linux, you don't have that. So what's the problem on the Raspberry Pi? Once again, you cannot just set it up from the repositories. You have to use a special script 
uh, well, a special source for that that was already made by some person on the internet and uh, it's called the GFOTO2 updater, it's there on GitHub and it's just a matter of running a simple command in a terminal you have to copy and paste this to your terminal uh, and paste and press enter I'm going to cancel that because I already have it running in, in this tab so what it's going to do, it will download and install the GPhoto 2 it actually will download the source code and compile the GPhoto 2 and get it running on the Raspberry Pi which might take a while and by pure luck it just finished on my Raspberry Pi so here we see uh, the command uh, executed and finished successfully so it says Finished enjoy it, GFOTO 2, 2.5.8, so that's it, you just have to use this GFOTO 2 updater, so I've plugged in my camera now, and after executing this GFOTO 2 updater command, let's try if it works, GFOTO 2, I don't think I need that, uh, summary, Yep, that works. And let's capture preview. We have the completion. There is a completion in this SSH. Okay, so that works too. Great, now we've got the GeForce uh, 2 running on Raspberry Pi. And uh, once again, the first thing to check is Java. So you have to run Java, probably supply the minus version parameter. So that you would actually get some meaningful output. So, uh, by the way, the version of Java that you have to have should be 1.5 or above. And that's uh, most of the time you will probably get the Java 1.7 or even 1.8. So, it shouldn't be a problem at all. You shouldn't have the problem with the version. So, after you get the Java, you have to have the, the GeForce 2 up and running. And uh, you should install it and make sure that it's working. Like by doing the summary, you know, and capture preview, that will ensure that the GeForce 2 is working. So after that is done, and you made sure that it, it all works, you can proceed to setting up the actual GeForce 2 server, and then the uh, you would actually be done after that. But the optional step for the Raspberry Pi, would, you would probably want to do the same as I did, uh, is to turn your Raspberry Pi into a Wi-Fi hotspot. And for this, I'm not going to provide an instruction. Uh, there is an instruction on another fruit website for that, and uh, they are much better than me on uh, the instructions for Raspberry Pi. So you should just uh, follow that instruction. I will provide the link again in the description. So the one thing to uh, let's say make sure of when you're doing the Wi-Fi hotspot uh, is uh, that the dongle or whatever Wi-Fi adapter this is the dongle for factor or anything else so whatever Wi-Fi adapter for Raspberry Pi you have is actually supporting the the router mode is uh, infrastructure mode or something like that anyway the instruction on the other fruit website website also speaks about that so you have to have a dongle that's capable of uh, working uh, 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 as a router. Okay, let's go back and see we have the G42. Now we only want the G42 server. So you just go to the GitHub, to my GitHub, to the G42 server, and look for releases. And always just take the latest one. So download the zip file. You can download it whichever way you want. Yes, you can see I'm running the this in X now after start X so I just do and it's graphically you can use the wget or whatever method of downloading and extracting actually let's uh, close the browser already and just go to the terminal yep so we downloaded the downloads so let's make some separate folder for this Yeah, let's go into that folder. 
move the downloaded zip. In here, unzip, which is a very simple unzip command. So what do we have now? We have the G42 server some version dot jar and a lid folder and that's all you need to run the gphoto server after you get the java and the gphoto 2 okay let's remove the archive the zip archive i don't need that anymore so what do you how do you run that it's very very simple you just put write uh, java minus jar and the name of the jar file like that it's not very hard at all, and if you're actually doing this in a graphical mode, you can probably double click on the jar file. So, uh, let me show you. If you go that, you could probably, I don't know what Open will do uh, on the Raspberry Pi action. Maybe it's not going to run it. But anyway, you probably don't want to run that from the graphical uh, interface. You want to run it from a terminal, and in the terminal, this. It's just as simple as that. Java minus Java for the two server. So it will start and it says start and server done. Which means that it's already running on the port uh, 8080. And if you're on the same Wi Fi, but I'm on the same. If you're on the same network. Uh, I don't remember the, the oh yeah that was the host name you more use the host name or IP address so click the preview get preview controls my camera yep so that's working well it's as simple as that also there are some parameters that you might change if you press ctrl c the control break it will quit if you want to change some parameters there are uh, some parameters that you can provide via the command line so if you don't have the gphoto in your pass you can provide a pass via the parameter then you can change the port by default it's 8080 as you've seen but you can use any port you want and you can change the log levels but you probably don't need that it's for the development and uh, also if you have any problems with uh, the g 2 server you might want to change that to trace a debug and then send me the log file and use mox you will not use that it's something i use for the development so the example of that would be again the Java minus jar. Let's put minus port and say 9999 just for the sake of example. Starting the server started, and you can already see that it says select channel connector 9999, and then the server started. So let's go back here to the browser. Refresh it doesn't work. Oops, sorry for that. So it doesn't work because there is nothing on port 1880 now. But if you go to port 9999, it's there. So that's how you run it. So to recapitulate again, what you need is Java, G42, and to install the G42 on the Raspberry Pi, you have to follow the link. In the description and use this G42 updater that's made for specifically for Raspberry Pi. And then you go to my GitHub, download the latest release of the G42 server, you unpack the zip file, and uh, once it's unpacked, you have to have a result this lib folder and this uh, the G photo server something.jar. Sorry. Because it's going to have the version name in the name, but it's going to change in the future. 
So the default is to server, and then to run it, you just use the Java minus jar and uh, put the name of the jar file in there. Since the version is constantly changing, you will probably have the name a bit different every time, but still it's going to be defaulted to server something.jar. And then if you want to change some of the parameters, you have to use the, the, the dash, the minus, like the dash port, then space and the number of port to change the parameters. And that's just as simple as that. You can uh, you don't have to do this on the uh, machine directly. You can SSH to your Raspberry Pi and run the command. You can uh, write, uh, put it into some uh, auto uh, start uh, in, in some of the init files, so it would be running automatically. It should probably make sense if you want to turn your Raspberry Pi into a remote for your uh, camera. And then uh, one thing that would also make sense is to turn your Raspberry Pi to the Wi-Fi hotspot. So then you could say use your smartphone to connect to the hotspot and then use the Gphoto to server to control your camera. But that's of course up to you. So this is this was the instruction. That I hope it was uh, complete enough. If you have any questions, please write me uh, them in the comments. That's it.